Okay, sure. So basically, it's it's a great pleasure again to have uh, Dr. Fiu Ong on our program. Uh, she talked uh, to us about the HECC TNM staging parameters of melanoma, and we continue those uh, talks with Merkel carcinoma. I don't know if you are going to talk about also some other uh, cancers, but we are very much uh, curious to find out what are the new updates on these important tumors. Thank you so much for your time, because I know that you are extremely busy, and you just said that you are hyper busy. Uh, at MD Anderson, so we greatly, greatly appreciate that you uh, come and uh, give us this lecture. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for giving me this opportunity again, and it's my great honor to be here. So today we are going to talk about update on CAP protocol and AJCC TNN staging parameter on Merkel cell carcinoma. Can you hear me very well? Yeah, yeah, it is very good. Okay, so first of all, I have no inf conflicts of interest to disclose, and these are my outline. So I'm going to start with a little bit introduction of Merkel cell carcinoma, because as you know, this is not a very common one, so some people might not be very familiar with this uh, entity. So I will talk a little bit about introduction, and then I, I will jump to the how to report Merkel cell carcinoma uh, based on the new eight editions of AJCC and also of co updated versions of CAP based on that eight edition. Mainly, I will highlight what's the difference between the current one and seven and the next new one eight edition because, as, as you know, we are going to use the new eight edition as I mean, at least at US starting from January 1st of 2018. That is basically two weeks from now. So we need to familiar with this new. Uh, update on this uh, staging system. So let's start with a little bit of introduction. So Merkel cell carcinoma basically is aggressive, but it's a rare primary cutaneous neuroendocrine tumor. It has a high risk for regional or distant metastasis. So it was first described in 1972 by Toker, and first it was named as trabecular carcinoma just simply because of the solid trabecular arrangement of the tumor cells. So and in US, the annual incident is like gradually increasing with the estimated uh, new cases uh, incident rate of 1600 per year. Mainly we see these kind of patient <clears throat> cases in the old age people, especially more than 65 years old, light skin individual, predominantly in the male. And most common primary site is, of course, sun exposed area, similar to other cutaneous neoplasms such as head and neck and extremities. So in terms of pathogenesis, this is uh, still a very interesting uh, area to explore more if you, one of you are interested in like doing research or trying to find something new because the pathogenesis is not clearly understood for this uh, neoplasm. So the main risk factor, as far as we know, is immunosuppression, UV radiation, of, of course, Merkel cell polyoma virus infection. That is approximately 80% of cases you can see that. So uh, let's talk a little bit about this. Um, uh, Merkel cell polyoma virus is a small circular non-enveloped double-stranded DNA virus. It was uh, first discovered by Dr. Moore and Dr. Chen, like thanks to them, these are the uh, same uh, scientists who also found the HHV8 virus, you know, that um, play an important role in the Kaposi sarcoma. So after figuring out that uh, uh, virus, the effect of the virus in the Merkel cell polyoma virus infection in the Merkel cell carcinoma, so we know now a little bit, at least like almost 80% of cases are due to that virus, but stay another 20% or so, stay and no. And on top of that, the bad thing is that Merkel cell polyoma virus negative patients have worst outcome compared to those with Merkel cell polyoma virus associated Merkel cell carcinoma. Okay, so let's move to the, a little bit clinical presentation. Again, it's not specific, but for the 
residents and fellow in the audience to memorize like easily. We usually use this pneumonia A I O U. A mean asymptomatic, like no pain, and E mean expanding uh, rapidly, and then uh, immunosuppression. Uh, and uh, mainly all kind older age, more than 50 years old, and in the sun exposed area of the Caucasian, as you see in this figure. Um, so histological features, uh, predominantly, as you know, here, this is the predominantly dharma based tumor, as you see here, right? We even have a <coughs> gray zone here, and then we have a solid nest, mainly a sheet, uh, sheet and nets of these uh, basophilic cells composed of small to medium round to ovoid cells with hyperchromatin nuclei. Yeah, with multiple small nucleoli, the cytoplasm is usually and fulfilled by scant, and we have numerous mitotid and apoptotic bodies. That's the typical histology features of Merkel cell carcinoma. If you need, if we need to do uh, immunohistochemical study to differentiate from other tumor, so because as you know, this is the carcinoma, so it was for the epithelial markers of keratin. So you can do the pancytokeratin or A1, A3 or CAN 5.2. But <clears throat> uh, the, the most significant one is the CK20 because it showed this uh, classical appearance of paranuclear pattern as you see in this figure. And also based on the name, right, this is the cutaneous neuroendocrine carcinoma. So neuroendocrine marker will be positive such as synaptophysis seeing chromogranin, NSE, CD56, etc. And the other thing is, as you, uh, uh, as <clears throat> I mentioned before, approximately 80% of these uh, cases can show the markers of polyoma virus. Here is the immunostaining showing the, highlighting the polyoma virus here. And then in terms of um, Another stain that we usually use is because, you know, these primary neuroendocrine carcinoma are not very common, like compared to the metastatic neuroendocrine carcinoma or small cell carcinoma from lung. So we want to differentiate, it is really primary or is the met from lung or other organs. So we usually do TTF1 just to differentiate primary versus met from lung. So that will be an important immunostain you should usually do just to differentiate it. And so this is another interesting case that we encountered during our sign out. So I have mentioned you that Merkel cell is basically more dharma based tumor. But here you see this case, this interesting case, you see the intra epidermal basophilus tumor cells, you know, like distributed in nest and single cell at all levels of the epidermis. See that in detail, if you see round to over cell with basophilus scan cytoplasm, hyperchromatin nuclei, and also even nuclear molding. So this case, so I mean, you know, you see the intra epithelial, intra epidermal, lesion. So in your mind, first of all, you have to think about in the skin. So first thing first in US will be melanoma inside you, right? And the second one be, will be squamous cell carcinoma inside you. And then that difference in your mind should be the, for example, like patches of extra memory patches disease. And then next one will be some kind of cutaneous T cell lymphoma, such as the mycosifungoides. And so we did uh, 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 different immunogestural see like which <clears throat> differentiate um, between these uh, differential diagnoses. So first we did the CK56. Here you can see uh, these lesional cells are negative and then uh, be careful in interpreting this immunostate because you can see this uh, staining. It is not the lesional cell, it's just the background intraepidermal keratinocytes. Okay, and then we did the synaptophysin, you see this patchy staining pattern. So by doing CK5, is kind of we exclude the possibility of the uh, squamous cell carcinoma inside you, right? And then we also did the S100 or other melanocytic marker to rule out the melanoma inside you. So that was negative. So again, we rule it out. And we did a CEA just to rule out the possibility of patches or extra memory patches disease. And also we did uh, the uh, lymphocytic marker just to rule out possibility of cutaneous T cell lymphoma. So now we ended at with what? Here CK20. 
So CK20 positive and even CK7 positive. So even though CK20 is not like, as I said before, like a nuclear dog-like pattern, stay positive. So Sam Prabhu has said that if it is intra uh, uh, epidermal lesion, the Markel cell carcinoma might not show the classical paranuclear pattern or CK20. And also approximately 33% of the Merkel cell carcinoma cases can be positive for CK7. So that might be another uh, <clears throat> pitfall to differentiate from square. Okay. So altogether, based on these phenotypic features, the final diagnosis was just intraepidermal Merkel cell carcinoma. Right. Just the like interesting case, but that's let's finish this introductions and let's go to our real topic just we need to discuss today. So here, uh, what I'm showing is the significant association of the um, uh, so significant association between overall survival of the patient with Marcus cell carcinoma and the uh, extent of the disease. You know, so that local much better than a patient with distant MET. And here, another graph showing, again, uh, significant significance correlation between a uh, patient overall survival and the uh, staging of the uh, Merkel cell carcinoma. So you know the staging is basically mainly depend on our pathology examination. So as a pathologist, it's very important to examine our <clears throat> cases very uh, carefully to provide all the prognostic and also clinically relevant parameter uh, for the management of that patient, right? So in US, to help that pathologist, we have the uh, CAP or College of American Pathologists. Um, they provide a protocol to have the pathologist in providing relevant uh, information in our pathology report. Those elements, as I mentioned, in in the melanoma, it includes both essential and recommended elements. So these CAP protocol are based on the AJCC staging system. So now we have a new eighth edition of AJCC. So now see also the CAP protocol, we have an updated one, which was published in June 2017. As I mentioned before, these all new parameter we affect by uh, January 1st, 2018 in US. So Again, these uh, cancer templates are required for accreditation in our, in US at, at least, like some accreditation by different pathology societies such as CAP or other societies such as uh, NCI. And then in multiple hospitals, these are the required uh, things that you have to sign out your case using this cancer template. And MDNS, and we started using that since, um, uh, we have been using that since 2015. Okay, so eight editions of the Merkel cell carcinoma. So it provides important information both for both management and prognosis of patients with Merkel cell carcinoma. It's recommended by both AJCC, American Joint Cancer, <coughs> and also the uh, Union for International Cancer Control, UICC2. So the eight edition has now separated criteria for clinical and pathology staging that I will um, talk about uh, in the later of my talk. So these criteria or these new parameter are based upon the data that they got from the analysis of approximately 10,000 patients with Merkel cell carcinoma, which uh, they were diagnosed between 1998 and 2014 from the National Cancer Database in US. So these data provide more detailed correlation with clinical outcomes. So again, pathology report, you know, our pathology report is now more uh, comprehensive in terms of uh, all diagnostic, prognostic, or mutation aspect. And then we this had a great impact on the clinical decisions and treatment modalities of the our patient, right? So again, look at this. This is the, just the example of our uh, uh, pathology report for the biopsy specimen of the Merkel cell carcinoma at MD Anderson Cancer Center. So look at that. We report all these parameters for the biopsy specimen. So of course, the main thing uh, based on the uh, required element by AJCC will be tumor size. That means greatest dimension of the tumor. And of the other one is presence of 
any direct invasion to extracutaneous tissue such as bone, muscle, fascia, or cartilage. And this is uh, this uh, red estuary that's highlighting the required element by CAP. Again, the same like a tumor size, and we need a vascular invasion and invasion beyond the subcutaneous tissue as well as the margin status. This is an example of our pathology report for the resection specimen or wide local excision specimen with or without sentinel lymph node biopsy. So you see this is the page one of our report. In the page two, what we do is we put these all cap, cap protocol, including the TN and staging. You see we report both required and recommended elements. So these blue asteroids are recommended elements, and then this red arrow are required elements. So here, AJCC, that is American Joint Committee on Cancer Staging and Classification System. As you know, basically a TMN staging system, T is primary or local disease, that means stage one and stage two disease, N is tumor with region and mat or stage three disease, and M is for the tumor with distant mat or stage four disease. This TMN staging system basically determine prognosis, treatment, as well as the enrollment in clinical trial. So let's start with the T staging. So this is for primary tumor. You see this is comparison between seven and eight. More or less is the same, right? So TX mean we cannot measure the tumor parameter or tumor dimension because the tumor was, uh, the tissue was uh, um, obtained through the like cura touch or very fragmented, said, so there's no way to measure. And T0 may no evidence of primary tumor, as that's easy one inside your primary tumor. And T1 through T3 is based on the tumor dimension, not the thickness, be careful, tumor diameter. But in the eighth edition, they even said clinical tumor diameter. So if you have the like uh, imaging or clinical measurement of the tumor, you're supposed to use that, but usually, we might not have it. So at that point, you can use your gross dimension, but this is for the maximum diameter, measure in centimeter. So if the tumor is two or less than two centimeter, that will be T1. If the tumor is between two to five centimeter in greatest dimension, that will be T2. And more than five centimeter will be T3, and T4 is tumor with extra cutaneous invasion. And Next one is the cap protocol. So here from now, this red color means the um, required element by CAP and the blue asteroid mean the recommended element. So you supposed to um, report it, but not mandatory. So here see tumor side, we are supposed to, or we have to report at least one greatest dimension of the tumor mass. If we have three dimension that two additional one, you can put it here. And again, they are saying here because our pathological measurement may be inaccurate because of shrinkage, you know, we put in the formula, right? So that way that tumor can shrink and then the, the diameter might not be accurate. So that point they are uh, recommending if you have the clinical tumor size, use that. If you don't have clinical tumor size, use the histology site or the cross dimension basically. And in, in terms of tumor extension, so that's very important, right? So you have to say, do you see any tumor extension, uh, I mean, extra cutaneous site or direct invasion into the bone, muscle, fascia, or cartilage? You see it or you don't see it, you have to report it. And in terms of tumor thickness, this is basically the same that I have uh, <clears throat> told you before in melanoma. So we measure using the uh, calibrated um, ocular micrometer uh, at a right angle to the adjacent normal skin and all the way down to the deepest portion of the tumor. And we report in millimeter. And if the tumor is present at the deep tissue edge, we report it as at least in millimeter and then in the comment we said that there's a limitation of the tumor thickness because the tumor present at the deep margins okay and in lymphovascular invasion defined by the presence of tumor cells within the endothelial line lumen of the vessel it can be intratumoral or can be peritum peritumoral area as you can see in this example and then 
if sometimes it may be difficult to look for the LVR in the very dense the nodular tumor. So at that point, you can use different kind of immuno. Usually we use here D240. So actually we even did a little study for that um, to, uh, lymphovascular invasion detected by D240. So we found that um, marker cell carcinoma with positive lymphovascular invasion detected by D240 are typically larger tumor than uh, tumor without LVI, if you compare those two. And also tumor with LVI has more frequent, frequently more, they, they frequently develop metastasis compared to those without LVI. So these are just the latest study that we did here. And then pattern of growth. This is again, not the mandatory or require element, but it's recommended elements here as I show in the Astray. So in terms of the growth pattern, we have two growth pattern. Is that nodular or is that infiltrated as you see here? So it has been shown that nodular tumor growth pattern correlate with a better survivor. So the other question comes, sometimes you see both uh, features and part of the tumor show nodular and the other part of the tumor show infiltrated. What should I report? If you have both, you better report infiltrated pattern for sure, or you can report both because infiltrated pattern, it has correlate with the worst survivor. And in terms of tumor infiltrating lymphocytes or tail, the reporting system is very similar to melanoma, nothing special. We will say is present or not. If it is present, we will say breast or non breast. Again, breast main, uh, you see the lymphocyte diffusely infiltrate the entire base of the vertical uh, growth phase or entire invasive component of the tumor, as you see here. Then breast mean easy, just the focal lymphocyte infiltrate in the tumor. And this is the another study done by our group. And then they reported that higher CD3 and CD8 positive T cell density at the tumor periphery of the lesion is significantly associated with improved overall survival and disease specific survival. That's so they did the, these uh, uh, immunoprofile to look for that and they found this finding. And the mitotid index is again similar to melanoma. So, first of all, you have to look for the hotspot or mitotically active area. Yeah, in one millimeter square area is uh, more or less sim uh, similar to four and have high power field in our Olympic microscope. But again, be careful that it varies from microscope to microscope. So we usually recommend looking at the entire session until you find one mitosis and then count consecutive fields. And then you report the mitotic figure in whole number. That means one or two. You don't report like 1.5 or 1.3, something like that. If you don't see any mitotic figure, you will report it as less than one. That means equivalent to zero, okay? And um, again, here, um, require element for CAP include procedure. So I just want to remind you, for example, in our institute, if you have the white local excision specimen, usually it come with the sentinel lymph node or lymph adenectomy specimen. At those cases, you have to say both procedure, like white local excision and sentinel lymph node lymph adenectomy, something like that. So you have to report more than one if you have more than one procedure in that uh, case. Also laterality, again, this is recommended element and margin. In terms of margin, this is required element. You have to report the margin stated for both deep and periphery. If the tumor present within one millimeter, you should report the exact diameter, like for example, 0 0.4 millimeter from the closest peripheral margin, something like that. And pre presence of second malignancy, this is even though it's not required, it is prognostically significant. So you have to say present or absent. For example, in this example, I'm showing you, you have a Merkel cell carcinoma here because the highlight there was CK20. And also in adjacent to that, you have a squamous cell carcinoma inside you. This is very common finding. So uh, this is the second malignancy is here. So you have to report that. In terms of tumor site, you have to specify which area of the body. And if you don't know, please say not specify. The location of the tumor is also important for prognosis of patient with Merkel cell carcinoma. Head and neck region is usually high risk area because mainly 
possibly because of difficult to treat. And they said that tumor on the scalp is significantly larger and more likely to present with distant match. And tumor on the lip has a higher rate of invasion beyond subjected and associated with shorter overall survival. And tumor on the ear has higher rate of match to the lymph node. And then they said that the trunk, especially the vulva and very perianal region, the, they are the worst pro prognosis, uh, the tumor with the worst prognosis. In the lag lesion has a high incidence of local recurrence, mainly because, you know, poor uh, blood supply, especially in the older patient. So that means it's a limitation in the role of white local excision. And also it has the uh, a poor tolerance for high dose radiation in that location. So these locations are the high risk location. Other histologic factors that are associated with poor, agnos uh, poor prognosis include more than 10 high, more than 10 mitotic figure per high power feed tumor site, more than five millimeter increased tumor thickness, infiltrated growth pattern, as I mentioned before, invasion into the subcutaneous tissue, not only in the dermis, and then of course presence of lymphovascular invasion and presence of any second malignancy, concurrent or not. And this is the um, uh, survivor cup showing in the patient overall survivor with look at disease only. Again, you can see the significant difference of the overall survivor uh, associated with this uh, T staging. And so, so this is just the summary changes in staging of the Merkel cell carcinoma based on eight edition. So in stage one, in seven edition, we have two, one A and one B, but in eight edition, it became just one because in the previous one, they divided into two groups based on the notice stated by pathological examination or clinical examination. Right now, doesn't matter, pathology or clinical, as long as negative lymph node, only the T1 tumor that may less than or equal to two centimeter and greatest dimension, that will be stage one. And if you have more than two centimeter in tumor size, that would be T2, sorry, uh, stage two. Here again, we have a stage two. The previous version on seven edition have A, B, C. Now it divided into only A and B because again, they eliminate the different um, situation between pathological or clinical nodal status. As long as it is negative, and then the, uh, the tumor with more than two centimeter in greatest dimension, that will be 2A. If the tumor has extra cutaneous invasion without lymph node match, that will be our stage 2B. Again, this is just showing the correlation between the staging and the overall survival of the patient with local disease. Let's move to the region and match. This is seven edition. You know, we have that, uh, the previous edition, we have N N1 and N2. N2 is for tumor with intransit, and one is and when we have A and B group. A group is for micromat. That means uh, we uh, detected the tumor by microscopic examination. Macromat means detected by uh, clinically. So just the definition of intransit. Intransit means the focus of tumor, discontinuous from the primary tumor, but it located between the primary lesion and the draining region and nodal basin or distant to the primary lesion. So here's the comparison between seven and eight. So you see in the eight edition, we have additional PN3. So PN3, basically the previous PN2, we call intransit mat. Any tumor with intransit mat PN2, now we have PN2 and PN3. Intransit with any number of lymph node mat, that will be PN3. Intransit without or with, with no lymph node mat, that will be PN2. In addition to that PN1, you see now, a little difference. First of all, the terminology. Previously, we call A is the clinically occurred lymph node, and B as a, uh, previously we call A is micro, and now in the new edition, they call it clinically occurred. For B, previously, uh, we call it macro, but now is they call it clinically or radiologically detected positive lymph node. Even A, now they are dividing into ASN and A. ASN may that positive lymph node detected by sentinel lymph node biopsy. And A mean that positive lymph node detected by lymph node dissection specimen. So a little bit more like a specific in the new addition. 
and Santina lymph node uh, in macro cell carcinoma at MD Anderson, then we usually trying to do the breath, uh, breath lofting if we can. If it is so small, of course, we just do the bind session. And then what we do is, we do the uh, if possible do the breath lofting and inclusion of the as many fragments as possible within a single paraffin block. And what we do, and then we do the one HNE from that lymph node. If it is positive, fine, we call it metastatic carcinoma. If it is negative, we have to cut deep our HNE and also did the immunostain with pancytocarotene cocktail. If it is positive, that's metastatic carcinoma. But if it is negative, we just say negative for metastatic carcinoma. So that's the way that we do at MD Anderson. So when, when we report the lymph node, we use the number of sentinel lymph node. You have to report that and number of total lymph node. That means both sentinel and non sentinel. Also, of course, how many of those lymph nodes are positive for carcinoma. And in addition to that, we also report the largest uh, metastatic full size. Like for example, in two dimension, in this cartoon, you can see we give two dimension of the, the metastatic full size. And also we give the location of the metastasis full size. Is that subcapsular or is that intraparenchyma or is both? Also we report the extracapsular extension status is present or not. This is just the example showing the pancytocarotene state in the uh, sentinel lymph node. You know, on HNE &E alone, it's difficult to detect the positive cell, but here it highlighted with the pancytocarotene stain beautifully. So that's just the example. And so the presence of any node disease is the most powerful predator of survival and risk for develop, developing distant metastatic disease based on this um, uh, a new HACC study uh, analysis. And here is the uh, summary of the staging. So stage 3A. So previously in seven edition, you see only 3A and 3B. Now it became 3A and 3B, but in 3A we have two groups. So first 3A, that's easy. Any tumor thickness with the N1AS and main um, clinically occurred um, detected positivity by sentinel lymph node or N1A that mean clinically occurred but positive, uh, positivity uh, was detected by lymph node dissection specimen, those cases will be 3A and 3B will be any tumor thickness with um, positive on uh, lymph node detected by clinically or radiologically and all presence of intrinsic mat. In addition, we have now one more 3A group. That means T0. T0 means unknown primary. The only thing that we found is clinically detectable lymph node match with unknown primary is the another subtype of 3A. Okay. So here they show in the approximately 2500 <coughs> marker cell carcinoma patient with regional lymph node match. So you can see that uh, in the in this graph, the overall survival again uh, significantly correlate with the um, end category. Okay, and let's move to the distant mat. So it's a seven and eight addition again, and overall you don't see any big difference. So uh, in seven addition, as we know, we have a no mat that will be PM zero, and with the mat it will be PM one. And then we have ABC subgroup based on the location of or the distant mat. If it is skin and subcutaneous tissue or distant lymph node, that will be A. B for the lung, metastatic to the pulmonary area, and C for metastatic to the uh, other visceral area. The same thing here, PM0 and PM1, but now they more specifically cl clarify the definition. PM0 means no distant mat detected on clinical or radiological examination, nothing about the pathology examination, right? And But PN1 is distant mat, microscopically confirmed. So as a pathologist, you can use PN1 when you see the positive distant mat on your pathology examination. 
And basically, you cannot use PM0 because this is not the pathology examination. It's the terminology for the clinical or radiology examination. So, for example, if you don't see any distant net in your pathology examination, what should you say? You should say PM and A. And A may not applicable. That means you don't know, right? And in terms of staging, for stage four, there's no difference the same. And then... Here, the primary predator for survival or patient with Merkel cell carcinoma. So first thing is the tumor dimension, of course, right? If less than two centimeter stage or T1 and more than two centimeter may, may be <clears throat> uh, T2 and then extracutaneous extension, it's more aggressive behavior. I already show you the uh, significant correlation with overall survival and of course no death status and then at the stage of presentation when the patient presented with the late stage that's the the clinical outcome for that patient will be very poor right so if we can detect early is much better so summary of changes in that eighth edition again the most important changes include separations of clinical and pathological stage grouping so and then they eliminate the stage 1a and stage 2 subgroup based on pathological node status they include the category of PN1ASN into the stage 3A group for pathologically detected, clinically occult nodal mat identified only by sentinel lymph node biopsy without completion lymph adenectomy. And they include this category T0, PN1B, and 0 in pathological stage 3A to identify patient with clinically detected nodal markers and mat with unknown primary tumor. Now the separation of patient with intransient mat into two groups. One is PN2, that means just intransient, no lymph node mat. And PN3 is intransient plus any number of positive lymph node, okay? And then this is just a little bit about the management. So any gestaging procedure, usually what they do, they did the biopsy, they found the Michael cell carcinoma, next step what they will do. They have to do complete examination of the skin and regional lymph node and uh, they have to do imaging study of their chest particularly important because you know as i said before met from the uh, small cell carcinoma of the lungs is more common than the primary uh cutaneous neuroendocrine carcinoma or also called Merkel cell carcinoma it may also influence because by doing that you will see the subsequent management is the met or is that primary or if you already found the lymph node or so as I said, initial presentation of the staging is most important prognostic parameter for that specific patient. Here's the, just the, a little bit algorithm of staging and management. So again, first start with biopsy confirm cutaneous muscle, and then you have to do a very thorough clinical examination, and then you have to look for any evidence of distant mat. If there's a distant mat, uh, you take the biopsy for that side and confirm is if it is positive, you should do the systemic therapy as tolerated. The main problem is, as I said before, it is very common in older group, individual, older age individual. That means they have, might have uh, like comorbidity, so it's sometimes difficult to treat those patients. Again, let's see if you don't see the distant match or the biopsy didn't confirm the distant match, you have to look for the regional lymph node involvement, right? So you what you do, you do the, um, if it is regional lymph node positivity, if you see any suggestions of positive lymph node, you do the biopsy and confirm if it is positive, you should do white local excision of primary tumor and definitive treatment of regional lymph node. Now these they, they even, for example, at MD Anderson, we have a clinical trial with immunotherapy such as PDL1, right? And um, if you don't see any suggestions of regional lymph node involvement, uh, sorry, if you uh, don't see anything, you still should do the sentinel lymph node biopsy to confirm it is really no regional lymph node. And then if sentinel lymph node negative, you just just do the white local excision of this, uh, the primary tumor. And some people think about a juvenile radiotherapy. But that's again optional. Of course, if sentinel lymph node positive, you will treat the patient similar to the um, other patient with lymph node uh, positivity, right? In, in terms of recurrent, this is the very aggressive nasty tumor. 
So because local recurrence can happen up to 29% of the patient and nodal recurrence in 33% of patient and distant match can happen up to 33% of the patient. So here again saying patient with the initial local recurrence had a significantly higher chance of developing subsequent distant match than those without any nodal recurrence. So if you have nodal recurrence, that's not a good sign, right? And also local recurrence usually occur within one year of initial therapy. The time is uh, very about one to nine months. And clinically detectable nodal recurrence after researching of the primary tumor usually happens between seven to eight months. So a man patient with nodal involvement either at presentation or at recurrence, there are uh, uh, five year survival rate is, is 11 to 60 percent, pretty low. Okay. So, in summary, today what I talk about uh, is a little bit about introductions of Michael cell carcinoma. And also, I talk, I review the updated CAP cancer protocol template as well as the AJCC TNN staging system, both seven and eight. And I compare and show you that what will be the differences. And then, uh, and now you begin family to use for the next year, right? And also um, in US, CAP cancer protocol template required by most institution. And then these uh, templates used for the clinical management decision. And then I also talk about a little bit summary of, of how to manage these patient. So I would like to thank all of you for coming today and thank you for your attention. I am happy to take any question, if you might have. Thank you again. Thank you so much. It was uh, fantastic. Uh, I'm opening up, uh, you know, the floor to questions. So you guys can put uh, your questions into the chat window. Thank you for the uh, great lecture. I have actually a couple of uh, questions that I would like to ask.